Good morning. Welcome to the best in television entertainment and information coming to you from WTVR Channel 6. A lot of history, a lot of heritage uh, going back to the very beginnings of broadcasting in this country. It really was a critical turning point for news and, and media in general. It has been 75 years since WTVR became a broadcast pioneer. We were the first television station south of the Mason-Dixon line. And it was mostly the brainchild of one man who worked tirelessly to put his vision on the small screen. Wilbur Havens is the guy whose shoulders we all stand on. A lover of all things mechanical and electronic, Havens first made his name in radio. WMBG signed on in 1927 as a 10-watt uh, AM radio station operating out of a, an empty room in his car park store. In 1944, his company Havens & Martin filed an application with the Federal Communications Commission for a television station in Richmond, Virginia. By the time the request was approved, Havens was already preparing for the debut. The day we dropped the bomb on Hiroshima, he was in Aberdeen, Maryland, buying used Army uh, television equipment filled two truckloads to bring down here. By early 1948, the WMBG building on Broad Street had been transformed into a state-of-the-art TV station. Plans were made to go on the air in April, but as Haven soon realized, there was one big problem. Four months before we were due to throw the switch, he asked the question, how big is our audience going to be? How many people have television sets? Uh, and nobody wanted to give him the answer because at that point in January of 1948, the answer was zero. So Havens went into matchmaker mode, bringing the top salesmen of the leading television manufacturers to town and arranging a presentation to the Richmond area radio and furniture retailers. It was love at first sight. And once the TV sets arrived in stores, they sold quickly. By the time we threw the switch in April, uh, the number had grown to a thousand. Just in time for opening night. So on April 22nd, 1948, WTVR went live for the first time at 7 o'clock that evening, making Richmond the 14th city in the United States to have television. The broadcast included live music, a variety show, news, sports, and a speech from then-Governor William Tuck. He almost didn't make slot. Governor Tuck came on the broadcast that evening and a few moments before he was scheduled to speak on air, he was no longer in the studio. Um, he had wandered next door to an establishment, um, was enjoying a few beverages and, and apparently holding court. So they dragged him back, uh, dragged him back to make sure that he could uh, get on air. And there were a few other hiccups. During the broadcast, the power went out a few times. Still, the night was considered a great success, though not everyone was thrilled. We were perceived, uh, rightly so, as, uh, as competition. In particular, the Richmond News leader had fought for the rights to have control of this new TV station, WTVR. And so on April 23rd, the next day, um, they actually buried this story on the 23rd page um, instead of putting it on the front page like the Richmond Times Dispatch did. While Havens had signed a contract with NBC, there was a coaxial cable shortage. So for the first three months WTVR was on the air, no network programming was available. That meant the early stars of television in Richmond were just ordinary Richmonders. Everything was local, local, local. Plays, uh, bands, garage bands. A lady would come on and talk about how to grow African violets. Uh, you name it, we were airing it. Some WTVR employees even worked double duty. We took one of our camera operators, a guy named Dal Burnett, uh, put him in a cowboy suit with cowboy boots, and he became Cheyenne Dal Burnett at the Half Circle D Ranch. He showed Western movies in the afternoon for kids, and they had a kids game show. All shot in a studio where you had to watch your step. Cameras uh, that they were using back in the early days were just slightly smaller than a Buick. So it was a really complex setup, required a lot of cords and cables, um, adding another danger, another trip hazard to already, you know, kind of precarious equipment. The birth of Channel 6 also introduced viewers to John Shand, a Navy veteran who for the previous four years had worked as a disc jockey and radio reporter. He would be WTVR's first and for a while only news anchor. Years before Walter Cronkite became the most trusted man in America, Shand would establish himself as the most trusted man in Richmond. Well, if you grew up in Richmond in the 1950s and the 1960s, 
John Shan's image and voice was just about as ubiquitous as you could get. It was just the man, that, that's, that's what the news was supposed to sound like. And he didn't just deliver the news. The odd thing about back then is uh, they, they did the news, but they also did commercial. Product placement was one of the ways that WTVR was making some of its advertising revenues for sure. So you've got John Shands in 1952 um, in a photograph from the Valentine Collection showing this camera zooming in on him pouring a beer during a Rich Brow live TV commercial. In addition to local shows, for the first decade, Channel 6 viewers were treated to a wide variety of national programming. We're one of the few stations in the country that at one time or another have been a net, an official network affiliate for the, all three of the major networks. The station became a permanent CBS affiliate in 1960. A few years later, Haven sold WTVR and his two radio stations to Roy Park, a North Carolina native turned New Yorker who had made a fortune in the food industry. It was for millions of dollars, not, not, a, not a bad return on uh, Wilbur's $500 investment to get things started with the radio station. While a number of changes were on the horizon, one thing would stay the same. The one thing that everybody that grew up in Richmond loves to see is our old covered wagon logo. One of the stipulations in the contract for uh, Park to take over WTVR is they had to keep the covered wagon logo. Park Broadcasting owned the station for more than three decades. WTVR has had several owners since and is now a member of the E.W. Scripps family. The lessons learned on April 22, 1948, and the days that followed have since traveled long and far from this place. Many of the standards and practices that are used at television stations all over the world today were started right here in this old building. And that is a tribute to the visionaries who saw that the future would be televised. So this is really going to revolutionize the world, and we now know it did. We were just the right place at the right time, and, and we're in it, in it at the beginning.